Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about room acoustic forest. I kind of synthesized this idea the other day and I want to see if this will help illustrate some of the problems I see every day on, on the phone and in our room forms. Most people in acoustics, they can't see the forest for the trees, okay? They, they look at little micro level things and, and they can't, you know, make sense out of the big picture and where they fit into that big picture. Okay, and in order to build a room in a forest, we got to cut down a lot of trees because most of this inter internet nonsense is, it, you know, it's fu fueled by half truths, hyperbole, innuendo, exaggeration. It's, it's just not what acoustics is about. So let's try to kind of, excuse the, the pun here, but weed through this process and see, you know, if we can get to the, Bottom here, every tree must be examined and challenged. These beliefs that are out there, this double wall nonsense, this foam is a base trap, this, that, the other, I don't care what you're talking about. Anybody that actually builds and tests rooms knows this stuff is nonsense. If you've got any physical background at all in the physical science, you know that it's nonsense. You know the material type can't do what they claim if you know the physics behind the material type. So it's just a bunch of nonsense. We gotta develop a sonic strategy. You gotta know in this room what you're gonna do because the room is watching everything that you do, so to speak, and it only sees energy. So if the room has eyes and it's just looking at you, it's just gonna see all these energy sources in the room, your drums, your guitar, your vocals, and it's going to react. It, let's say it's intelligent. It knows that vocals are going to operate in the 100 to 2000 cycle range. So it's going to react to that kind of energy. How's it going to react? Reverberation, because it's not really a low frequency pressure problem, right? We have pressure and reflections. So it's going to react that way. And, there, and that's good. We, we want to know how it's going to react because that tells us how we have to treat. I had a client uh, call me uh, today and he said, the reason I bought your products is because the response curves match each other. There's no peaks or dips. There's no spatial irregularities is the term. Well, yes, because that was a conscious design parameter of both our carbon and foam technologies. That's how we get the smooth, balanced sound in our rooms. Get the strategy developed. What are we going to do? How much treatment are going to, we need? How big of a room do we need to do it in? Each step is relatively simple, but each step must be answered before you move up to the next step. You got to do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It's a whole process. And companies will pick out steps like this and try and sell you a product for it without knowing step two or step four, without knowing where you're going or where you've been. Can't do it. Think through it, okay? Noise transmission issues must be first and foremost. Everybody wants to talk about absorption and diffusion in their room. I get it. But you got to deal with the noise first. That's our first step. Let's say we got a noise floor in a room. Let's say it's 50 dB. You shut everything off, and that's what the pressure meter tells you. And you're going to be mixing at 100. It's a lot of variance. It's a big, 50 dB is a lot amount of energy. So you have to make sure that you design accordingly. You have enough low frequency absorption. Proper rate and level. You have enough middle and high frequency absorption. Proper rate and level. High, same thing. Proper rate and level. Step by step by step by step. It's a pain in the ass. I get it. But it's the only way to ensure high resolution strategies. Did you miss a step? Get up here to five and you skip two. Guess what? When you get to six, you can't do six because you didn't do two. It's the way it goes, so you have to be aware of that. Diffusion, a great technology, completely misunderstood. 
It's a, a technology to make the room sound larger. It's a psychoacoustic tool, and you have to know where to place it, how much to use, what frequency response. It's just like a speaker. It has a frequency response. Don't buy into this notion that this here's one of our diffusers, and there's no way it could be a diffuser. That's how ridiculous these claims are. Must obey little and resist much. Nothing could be more appropriate in this case. I can't remember who said that. I think it was a, a Brit. But it's important. Challenge, challenge, challenge. Knock those trees down so you see a clear space. And we can build a room then in it. So hope this helps. Trying to get everybody on the same page again. Room Acoustic Forest. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.